the property of cellulose is quite different to that of glycogen and starch. The structure also, however, involves glucose. There are glycosidic bonds joined by a condensation reaction. The difference here, however, and it's quite significant, is that alpha glucose is not involved, but instead the isomer of glucose, which is beta glucose, is. The thing to remember, to join two beta glucoses together, you have to get the oxygen bridge linear between the OH groups on carbon 1 and carbon 4. This means that every second glucose molecule has to flip upside down so that the OH groups are on the same plane together. Then you can get the condensation reaction, formation of the oxygen bridge, therefore the glycosidic bond. So the next glucose molecule would be the right way up, the next one would be upside down. You can see the staggered glycosidic bonds. This in effect stops the monosaccharide chain from coiling up, particularly since it is thousands of glucose molecules long. So it doesn't coil up like you see in amylose, but instead it forms a linear chain. This isn't cellulose yet, simply because the property of cellulose is very, very strong. It has to withstand high osmotic pressure, so it has high tensile strength. A single chain of monosaccharides, thousands long, would simply not be strong enough to withstand that pressure. So what they do is they end up laying side by side to make a much thicker, stronger structure. So the glucose molecules, about 60 70 of these polysaccharide chains will line up side by side. They would fall apart, they would break away from each other if it wasn't for the fact that you have lots of OH groups sticking out from the glucose molecules and between each polysaccharide chain you can get the formation of hydrogen bonds. Now the hydrogen bonds themselves are weak but you'll have thousands or millions of these and together they form quite a strong structure. So you approximately 60 to 70 of these beta glucose polysaccharide chains lying side by side and this forms something called a microfibril. Still not strong enough. So to make the actual cellulose itself these microfibrils lay side by side and they remain side by side again because of the attraction of OH groups forming hydrogen bonds between the microfibrils. This in itself makes the cellulose fibre, a very strong material with high tensile strength. You will appreciate the strength of this when you study osmosis and the effect that it has on plant cells. Thank you.